Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is the time for us to prepare to cross over. I am Pastor Anthony Lester, Sanctuary Baptist Fellowship Church, welcomes and greets you to this, our Cyber New Year's Eve Watch Night Service 2022. 2022. And we thank the Lord. We've got our theme, Enter the New 2022. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you. We praise God for you. We just want to create a, a, a kind of a relaxed atmosphere, just of, of one of praise and, and celebration. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank the Lord for what he's done and what he's doing in our lives. We're going to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Are you glad? Are you glad to be available? Are you glad to be here? Are you glad to be at this moment right now in time? Hallelujah, we're, we're marking down and counting down the final minutes of 2021. Been a very, very interesting, challenging year, but we thank God because we walk and we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He has never failed us. Hallelujah. God is faithful, isn't he? God is faithful. We want to ask if you could just, we want to give a shout out to the Lord Jesus, give a shout out to all the saints. To all our brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. Thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you for inviting us into your, into your home. We've got uh, some very, very, uh, very, very uh, solid, but yet exciting and very promising and very uh, spirit-filled, uh, a spirit-filled message, a, a word of exhortation, a word of encouragement, and also a word that allows us to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. But as we move, we're, we're crossing over. We're going to uh, understand and consider what the scripture says. We're going we're gonna to leave those things which are behind. Leaving those things behind. And we're going to press towards, moving ahead, looking ahead, pressing towards the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Very, very powerful phrase right there. In Christ Jesus. Because if any man be... In Christ, the Bible says he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and yet, behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord because we're looking forward to new life, abundant life, new horizons, new fulfillment. Be able to experience God moving in a new and a powerful way in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we want to ask if you could just post a praise for the Lord to say hallelujah, amen in your comments. If you're there, could you just say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are excited tonight as we begin our countdown towards 2022. Uh, we're going to keep our eyes on the clock. I want you to do the same. We're going to start off. We're going to have a time of, of being in the word of God. And then after that, we're going to we're going to spend some time in prayer and focus and, and surrender and submission, surrender and submission in humility, humbling ourselves before the mighty, the mighty hand of God. Amen. He said that he will, if we, if we, if we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, that he will exalt us in due season. Well, it is due season. Hallelujah. It is due season. It is the season that God has ordained for us as the believers to be able to stand in the gap for the world in which we live. That's what we want to, to begin to, uh, to challenge and we want to, to exhort you. We want to urge you, we want to encourage you to realize that God has put you in position in the world at this time in, in 2022 that the Lord blessed us to be able to cross into a whole nother year of watching God do things in a way that only God can do them. We're looking for the miracle. We're looking for God to transform. We're looking for God to begin to uh, establish, redirect, and we're, we're believing God to uh, restore, and we're believing God for making things new. Not renew, but new. Hallelujah. New. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. He said, now it shall spring forth. Now. Not later, but now it shall spring forth. And I like the fact that God in Isaiah 43, he says, behold, I will do. 
I will do. And as we look at that and we consider that, God is saying what he's going to do. God is not needing us to do anything that's going to produce the manifestation of him being able to make a way, a way in the wilderness. And there's a lot of things going on right now. A lot of wilderness going on. A lot of things that are making it so that we are, we're beginning to, you know, a lot of people are wondering, you know, what's going on one thing after another thing, but we don't think it's strange. We, these things are not catching us off guard as the people of God. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take some time out. We're going to just do a little bit of, 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 of worship, a little bit of worship and thanking the Lord for who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we get a wave in the name of Jesus? We're doing it virtual. Hallelujah. God's got us in a place where we've got to create the atmosphere of worship and prayer. For in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Can we just lift our hands to the Lord and bless his holy name in the name of Jesus. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the name of the Lord. We want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Amen. If you are born again, if you are shown up saved, you have a reason to praise the name of the Lord. God is counting on you to be able for him to counting on you for you to be able to establish and, 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 and have yourself involved in consecration and worship and fellowship with him in a way where people will be able to see and, and, and recognize your light shining, that they'll see your, your good works. And as they see God working in you, that work that God does in you will bring glory to the Father in the name of Jesus. So what we want to do at this moment we just want to take a moment to just thank God. Hallelujah. Melody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Doing it virtual. Hallelujah. Got our virtual choir in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Glory to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't know about you, but God makes it very clear that no matter what it is, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means no matter what the circumstance or what the situation may be, the Lord is worthy of the praise and we magnify and we exalt him. We bless his holy name. We're going to take this opportunity to ask if you would prepare as we uh, are going to uh, take a, a minute to get into the word of God. We've got some very, 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 very uh, a challenging, but yet at the same time, we've got some stirring, a stirring uh, message that God has given us for the believers. Uh, there's, there's, times, there's times when the Bible makes it very clear that we need to exhort one another in love. The exhortation is directed towards those who know Jesus Christ as Savior and those who really recognize the importance of us living a spirit-filled life being led by the Spirit as the children of God, God allows us to be a part of his redemption 
redemptive plan as he is wooing and drawing people unto himself, seeking to save those who are lost. But no matter what is going on in the world, God has allowed us to be salt and light in the world to make a difference in the times and in the lives where God allows us to make impact and in the lives where we live. Whether it's on our jobs or whether it's on our homes, no matter where we are, God allows us to be the light of the world. We are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth. If it wasn't for the believers being here on earth, if you think things are perilous now, if you think things are getting darker now, if you think things are rough, if you think that immorality is on the rampage, if you think that unrighteousness and ungodliness is on a rampant rampage in the world, if it was not for the fact that God has saints, people that are saved in the world, the world will go all the way corrupt. But God has placed us here to be living epistles, living letters. The apostle Paul said, we are seen and we are read. People are reading your life. People are being exposed to the, the, the impact and the effect and the manifestation that the Lord Jesus is having in your life. Uh, God, is, God is moving in you. Paul said in the book of Philippians, he says, he says that, that, that it's, 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 it's the, it says, we, we know that. We, we got to work out our soul salvation. Uh, that means that Christ is in me and he's working out of my life. He said, because it's, it's God who's working in you, beloved. God is working in you both to will what's going on in your life and to do what's coming out of your life of his good pleasure. It pleases God to use you. It pleases God to be able to take you from being one who was who was was dead in trespasses and sins, did not know God, and for God to literally save you, fill you with his spirit because you've accepted the lamb of God, his son as savior, and God is using your life to impact the world that we live in now. There's hope for the world. I don't care how hopeless things seem. There's hope for the world. And I know a lot of things have been going on in 2021. Uh, the, the, the coronavirus has had us all inundated and totally consumed since uh, 2020. But it's not anything that's taking God by surprise. The Bible says that God is sovereign. That means God is totally in control. There's nothing that's going on that God is not aware of and that God does not allow. So we need to understand how to position ourselves, how to position ourselves to move from complacency into being effective and being uh, uh, those that God is using to, to be a part of the transformation process and be a part of the redemptive work of Christ. God is working, beloved. All this is going on because God is, uh, is actually getting man's attention. God has literally stepped on the stage out of, out of eternity into time, and God has gotten the world's undivided attention. Not just to mention the attention, but for those that are not recognizing God's sovereignty and the things that God uses to get our attention, what he does is he's turning, God is turning up the heat. God is turning, turning up the intensity. Uh, we thought that COVID was beginning to uh, dissipate, that it was slacking off, that it was going to be going away soon. But God decided that because we did not want to, we, we, we didn't want to respect him. We did not want to retain him in our knowledge. God has allowed this situation now for those that don't want to recognize the, the seriousness of this science, this virus. God is allowing the virus to now impact the naysayers, to impact individuals uh, all over, not just the naysayers, but every, everybody being impacted. But it just seems that those that don't want to, uh, to yield to what would help us all to become uh, healed or for those to help those not to be sick, uh, people are just denying the fact that COVID even exists. And for that, I believe that God is turning up the volume that we can, that he can get our, get our undivided attention. Uh, I'm not here to wish anything on anyone, but the coronavirus seems to be having more impact on those that are not vaccinated or those that refuse to believe that it exists. But what I like to do is this, 
for, for a theme for tonight, God has laid on my heart to discuss the whole idea of enter the new. The new year is coming, but there's got to be a, a, a entering into, into another sphere of God moving in your life that takes, it, takes us from the impact of, 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 of the world and the things that are going on in the world to make us be able to step back and to be able to literally go into a newness a new thing that God is doing, a new thing. The Lord Jesus moving in a way that is going to transform the lives of people. But God is calling on us as believers to be a part of that new thing. So as we enter into 2022, we want to enter the new, enter the new. And we're not talking about the new year. We're talking about enter the new move, the new thing that God has promised in Isaiah that he would do. But to amplify that, what we are going to do is we're going to take a, a look in the book of Joshua and begin to use that as our theme, Joshua and chapter number one. Let's bow our hearts in a word of prayer as we prepare ourselves to receive a word from the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, God, for those that are fellowshipping with us, God, that are that are here to celebrate the coming in of the new year, God, looking to be able to be a part of your plan and your masterwork. We're your workmanship, God. We're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. But God, we thank you and we ask that you would use us for your glory. God, we pray for the world. We pray for the nation. We pray for our communities. We pray for our families. And God, we stop and we pause to give you glory. We pause, oh God, to recognize you, God, and to look to you because you're the only one that can heal. You're the only one that can rescue and deliver. And God, we need you now, God. We need you, God, and we, we always have needed you, but we need you, God, in, in a special way this year, God, that we can start the year off, God, with a whole new mindset, with a whole new attitude, with a whole new realization of who we are in you. God, we pray that you fill us with your spirit, God. Send an anointing, oh God. And let your word flow, God, like rivers of living waters from the vessel that you've set forth right now. God, use me, God, and we thank you in advance, God, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. For us in Jesus' name, we pray. Can the people of God post the amen right there? Post the amen right there. Let's begin our journey. Joshua and chapter one, Joshua chapter one. Uh, what we what we what we find is that the book of Joshua is a companion to uh, the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. So the the Joshua in the Old Testament is a companion to the book of Ephesians, and what it is is that there the, the commonality that the books share is that they both both books speak of our inheritance and our our inheritance. The book of Ephesians in chapter 1 and verse 3, and then verses 11 through 14, we find these, these words. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where are these blessings? In Christ. Hallelujah. In Christ, our blessings are in Christ. So if any man accepts the Lord Jesus Christ and is baptized into the body of Christ, the Bible refers to us as being in Christ. He's in us, Christ in you, the hope of glorification, the hope of glory. And then verse 11 says this, verse 11 says, in whom Christ, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. There's our word, an inheritance being predestinated according to the promise of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In the Bible, in the scriptures, what we're finding is that anybody that's in Christ, God has made it so that we are partakers of an inheritance. We have obtained the inheritance. It's not we, we're waiting to get an inheritance. We have an, inherit, an inheritance. We have an inheritance. And then it says being predestined. That means that for the life of a believer, God has put boundaries around our lives to make it so that, he, that we can't go but so far outside of the divine counsel of God's will. He's got us hedged. He's got us surrounded. He's, he's, he's making it so that we will stay within the sphere of God's will and we will stay within the realm of the purpose according to the counsel of God's will. 
We'll, we'll, everything that, that's going on in our lives is going to be going, is, is, is operating and being manifest according to God's purpose. The book of Romans 8 says that, um, and we know that all things work together for the good. We should grab that right there. We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, the called according to his purpose. Verse 12 says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Verse 13 is personal, in whom you also trusted. If you've trusted the Lord Jesus, in whom you've also trusted. When you trust this after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But after you heard the gospel, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit convinces and convicts and converts the soul and God puts his spirit in us and causes us to walk in his ways. He says the gospel of our salvation. It says, and, and, and right after you believed, in whom? In Christ, after you believed, come on, grab this promise. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Here's the promise. The promise is that God has given us an inheritance that's incorruptible. It fadeth not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. And in that, God makes it very clear that in the reservation, God has, look, God has given us, verse 14, the, earn, the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance. That means the earnest is the down payment of our inheritance. God, you can thank the Lord that God, if you're saved, God has put his spirit in you and the Holy Ghost is the down payment on the inside that ensures that you one day will be caught up to meet the Lord in the, in the air. You got the Holy Spirit in you and God put his spirit in you as a down payment to ensure that no matter what happens in this life, no matter everything's gonna work together for the good because God has put the love of God in you, everything's gonna work together for the good. And not only that, it says the redemption of the purchased possession, that means until you caught up to be with the Lord in the air. Some people are gonna, as believers, are gonna sleep. They're gonna, they're gonna sleep in Christ Jesus. They're gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna be the dead in Christ. But the Bible makes it very clear that the dead in Christ are gonna rise first and then we which are alive and remain are gonna be caught up to meet him. When we're caught up, this is what he's talking about as our inheritance. We've inherited the Holy Spirit to make it so that we will actually be caught up to experience the inheritance that God has for us. Because like Abraham, we are literally pilgrims passing through this world. We're not of this world. We're in the world. We're not of the world. But we are literally occupying until the Lord Jesus comes. In 2022, we need to realize that we are waiting to enter, to enter the new. But as we're preparing ourselves for glory in heaven, God says that God's will is that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we've got our earthly work to do as we're passing through on our pilgrimage going home. So verse 1, verse 6 of Joshua chapter 1 says this, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people, God speaking to Joshua, you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Now, as we begin to get into an educational aspect of this, a little teaching right here, we don't want to necessarily be getting to a whole preaching, but we want to get in all of our getting, we want to get understanding. So let's break this thing down. Now, the Bible talks about the book of Joshua and the book of Joshua, the word, the word Joshua, the name Joshua. What does it mean? The name Joshua is, is, is listen, it's from the Hebrew name Yehoshua, Yehoshua, and Yehoshua means Yahweh is salvation. Jehovah, the Savior. Jehovah saves. So the book of Joshua is actually a book that is a type of the believer walking with Christ in the world, moving and possessing and fighting and experiencing all the things we have to go through on a daily basis as God has taken us to inherit the land. So Joshua is a type of Christ. Jesus is the one who brings us to the promises of God. And in Christ, those spiritual blessings are like spiritual freedoms. 
freedom, amen, free indeed, free from the bondage of sin, free from the penalty of sin. And, and, and also he brings us into the spiritual blessings, which is spiritual prosperity, hallelujah, uh, and, and, and spiritual blessings, blessings, uh, things that cause us to, to be able to experience the joy and the blessings and the overflow of the inheritance and the land that God has for us. Now, when we look at the verses and we look at uh, Joshua and chapter one, there is a, a verse there. And in Joshua chapter one, uh, it says that verse one says, now after the, after the death of Moses. So it says after the death of Moses, Moses died in Deuteronomy chapter 34. We hear about how Moses died. We know that Moses had been leading the children of Israel for about 40 years. Amen. 40 years. And he, he, was, he brought them out of Egypt, but God was doing miracles and God brought water out of the rock. And one time he asked Moses to speak to the rock. Now, listen, but Moses, like a lot of us, the impact of the people and the things that are going on in the world can ruffle us and can annoy us and make it so that we've stepped out of obedience to God and we find ourselves moving and operating in the flesh. I believe that in the times that we live in right now, a lot of us are, 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 are experiencing some of that. A lot of people have really taken their eyes off who they are and we're being impacted by what's going on in the world in which we live. Well, Moses was impacted in such a way that the people annoyed him so much, he got very angry. And instead of speaking to the rock, he smoked the rock. That smiting, that act of the flesh, that act of disobedience caused Moses not to be able to cross over and to go into the land of promise. Amen. So what happened is God made it very clear that, that when Joshua came on the scene, I, I love the fact of, of Joshua because Joshua, Joshua was Moses's um, uh, assistant. And uh, as Moses' assistant, one of the things about Joshua that was very, very clear is that Joshua, very, very, at, at a very early, st early stage of his life, Joshua was known to be a, a, a man of, of, of military combat skills, and he fought the fight against the Malachites. And that's the first time that Joshua is mentioned, fighting the fight against the Malachites when God told, when Moses told Joshua to go down, grab some men to fight this battle against them. And Moses said, I will go up on the mountain with my staff in my hand. Well, that's when Joshua was mentioned, but the book of, the book of Joshua makes it very clear that God made a promise. God made a promise and Moses, Moses led the people in the law. Moses represents the law. The law is represented by God giving instruction and God telling uh, the people of Israel uh, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. So God actually establishes what is a constitution, a constitution that makes the people know what God expects to teach them how to do what God expects. But it, but it also, the law was also designed, the, the law, the, the commandments were designed, the book of the law was designed to allow the people to see that through their own effort, through their own works, they could not do the things that would please God. They could not be holy in and of themselves. They could not experience or, or begin to, to display the righteousness or the holiness or the perfections of God in and of their own strength. And Moses was a actual type or model of that. Moses represents the law. Well, Joshua doesn't represent the law. The law is works, doing works to try to please God, uh, thinking that God will declare us right by the works that we do. Well, the book of Joshua is a book that's different. The book of Joshua is actually tying into the whole principle of faith. And this principle of, a, of inheritance is tied directly into Abraham. Abraham. The Bible says by faith, Abraham. Listen to these words. When he was called to go, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, 
called to go to leave the heir of Chaldeans and go for an inheritance, the Bible says that Abraham obeyed. That's the very key, key verse, very, very key verse, that Abraham obeyed, Abraham obeyed God, and he went out not knowing where he was even going. Genesis chapter 12, 1 starts to allow us to see more into what the Bible refers to as the Abrahamic covenant. And in that, the Bible says, the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show you. God wants us to, to, to operate in the realm of faith and not the, the realm of, of sight. So as we are living in getting ready to, to enter the new, we want to reinforce the fact that you can't go by what you see, you can't go by what you hear, and you can't go by what you feel. God wants us to live by faith and to trust him and to operate in the opposite of what Moses did. Moses was disobedient. The principles of the new, the principles of operating in the new as we are living and moving and possessing the land of our inheritance, God lets us know that two principles, two major principles are key to us being successful in 2022. The first principle is faith, the operative word faith, to literally believe God and to be, and then the second principle is obedience, to obey God, believe God. God said it, believe God's word, trust God for who he is and do what God says, all right? So this is it. The Bible says that, God made a promise to Abraham and to Abraham's seed. And to Abraham's seed in Genesis, God made a promise to Abraham and to Abraham's seed. He said, all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. And in that, God makes it very clear that, that Abraham's seed is going, to, is going to receive the inheritance. But in the New Testament, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, grab this. It says, and if you be Christ, if you are saved, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We want to say right now that God is saying that the promise of the inheritance that God made to Abraham, God has promised that for you. There is an inheritance for you, beloved. There's an inheritance that God has established for you. We can't be focusing on the things that are going on down here on earth. We can't be worried about where the moth and the rust corrupts. We need to keep our affections and our mind on things above Hallelujah, where the moth, moth and the rust and the dust does not corrupt it. And this is it. You got to make it so that if God has promised an inheritance for you, we can't uh, begin to define ourselves based on, on the good or the bad that's going on down here, how we feel or how we don't feel, whether we uh, believe or don't believe, whether we trust or don't trust. We have to be careful because it seems to me that a lot of believers are beginning to grow weary in well-doing. The Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. Don't faint in trusting God. You must take hold of what God has ordained for you. God has an inheritance for your life, so you've got to literally claim that inheritance, move in that, in that inheritance, and expect these things that happen that God has promised. We've got to be, we've got to be standing on the promises of God. That's why in the book of, of, of Joshua, it begins to be very, very emphatic that you have to believe that you have an inheritance. Do you believe that you have an inheritance? Do you, have a, a, do you believe that you have an inheritance? Do you believe that God has blessings that are stored up for you? Do you believe that God has actually made it so the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and that everywhere the sole of your foot trods, it's yours? God wants us to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6.12 says you should fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. Lay hold on the fact that you are saved. Don't begin to uh, live your life like you're not saved. You got to stay focused on who you are and whose you are. And you got to make it, you got to allow yourself to be an instrument of God's righteousness in the world in which we live. You must, you must be determined to go and take the inheritance. Everything that God has for you, you got to fight for it. You can't just settle for anything. You can't let doctors or your lawyers, you can't anybody dictate what your fate or what the end is going to be as it pertains to you because God is the one who is moving in your life. God is the one who is ordering the steps of everyone that he refers to as being a good man, a God man, the steps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. So God wants us to fight for it. God wants us to stand for who we are. 
God wants us to stand for it. Don't lose ground. We can't be backsliding. We can't be weak. Uh, we got to realize that, that we, you are more than a conqueror. There, there, look, there's nothing that you live, you are more than a conqueror, which means that in all things, hallelujah, you are victorious. And you can't settle for anything. You can't just settle for anything anymore. You can't settle for less, but you've got to do everything that you can to stand and you've got to put on the whole armor of God because the book of Joshua makes it very clear, beloved, that we are in a warfare. We are fighting a battle. We, the book of look, Joshua was a man of battle. And in the book of Joshua, it is an actual picture of what we need to do in order for us to enter the new. We must consider and hold closely to the New, new Testament passage of Scripture. Here's the New Testament passage, passage of Scripture that we've got to hold on to. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, it says, Now all these things that happened in the Old Testament, how God demonstrated himself, all through the, look, Moses wrote five books, the Pentateuch, and in those books, we were able to see God move, establish God's commands, understand God's instructions, and to know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to the same power that's working in us. So God says all these things that happen in the Old Testament, they're, they're written unto to them, they're, they're, they're written unto him for examples, for examples, and they're written for our admonition upon who the ends of the world have come. What do you mean, God, that they're written for our admonition? God says these things that happen in the Old Testament, they're written, they're written to us as warnings for us to be cautious. Hebrews 4, verse 4 through 2 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. God is saying, I don't need you working to try to do. I need you to begin to, by faith, rest in the finished work that I'm doing and realize that I'm the one that's moving. I'm the one that's in you, both to move and to will and to have my being in you. God is saying, we, we, we should fear. He said, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left of, lest of, lest left us of entering into his rest that any of you seem short of it. We can't be getting full of anxiety. We can't be showing signs of being overwhelmed, being discouraged, being despondent, giving up, quitting, uh, uh, ascribing and, and owning situations that are contrary to who we are and who God says we are. The Bible says there's, first of all, in the book of Joshua, there is a lot of symbolism. And the one we wanna deal with just tonight as we prepare, because we're gonna be going through the book of Joshua. Amen. Starting the new year off tonight, and we're going to continue to preach the whole book of Joshua. Amen. As we enter into January and throughout until we finish the book. But the one thing that we want to emphasize tonight as we are enter, as we enter the new, enter the new, we're going to start with just the crossing of the Jordan. So what happened is when the Bible, the Bible says that what happened is they, when, when the people of God got into Jordan, and you could look at Jordan as being the world and the world that we live in now, the, the life that we're living in Christ Jesus, as we're following Jesus Christ, he is leading us as we're going through crossing over to go into promised land. We're going to cross over the River Jordan. And the River Jordan actually makes it so it's very clear. We've got to cross the River Jordan so we can get into the land. But then we have to anticipate, beloved, here it is. Have you ever been saying, a lot of us are saying to each other, as each day goes by, you're starting to say, it feels like things are happening one thing after another. I mean, even in my own home, one thing after another. I mean, incident, experiences, you know, uh, some hardships, some things that are very, very challenging, things that make it so that we start feeling like we're losing our strength. And some things are very discouraging. So what we want to learn that when, the, 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 when you cross over the Jordan and you go to possess the land and you enter the new, that's when God allows the believer to, to, to experience and to know that's when the battles begin. A lot of us thought that when we got saved that it's going to be like, you know, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Yes, it does. That's, that's, that's true. But a lot of us thought that because we were saved that we weren't going to experience anything that was going to be heartbreak or heartache. 
that there will be no thing, no, nothing that makes you so, everything is just going to be joy and, and, you know, joy like a river and all that kind of thing. But the Bible makes it very clear that as believers, what we need to understand, beloved, God has made it very clear. We are in a battle. That's why Paul says we got to put on the whole armor of God. It's battle time, beloved. It's not time to be weak. It's not time to be being faint. This is when the battle begins. It's beginning now. The battle is on. It has been on. It, just in case you don't know it, the battle has been on. And because you are saved, that's why we're going through. And Paul says that we're troubled on every side. But we're cast down, but we're never forsaken. That's when we the battle's going on. And what we're doing, we're fighting for the land. We're fighting to occupy territory down here on earth. We're redeeming the time because the days are evil, but we're not giving in to the, to the rulers of the darkness of this age. We're literally putting on the whole armor of God that we can quench, put out all the fiery darts of the wicked. But you've got to understand that God protects us as we're down here by us putting on the armor and he gives us the shield of faith because faith is the very, very operative thing of God's armor that protects us from all the darts that are going on that are designed to take us out. And, and, and some of the things that we find is that as, as you enter into Jordan, this is when they start dealing with the people of the land. We're looking at the news, we're experiencing... I mean, the things that happen in the capital and on and on and on and on and on. These are things, beloved. These are things that God has called us to as we are dealing with the people of the land. We should not be surprised. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times are going to come. They're going to be lovers of their, own, of their own selves and haters of God. We have to literally step in and we have to be determined that we're going to oust or overthrow the overthrow territories. We're taking territory. We're taking dominion. We're taking occupation. We're praying that God will pull down strongholds, that God will cast down imaginations, that he will come against every high thing that exalts itself above the mighty of the mind of God. We should not think it's strange because of the fiery trials and the things that are coming to, to, to try to hurt us and to try to harm us. But God allows us to see that we're going to be troubled on every side. We're going to be going down. We're going to be going through. But every time we go through, just like when the Lord Jesus was crucified on the cross, the Bible says if, if, they, would have, if they would have known who he was, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. The enemy knows who you are. The enemy knows that you saved and that you sanctified and that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. But some of us are walking around like we don't know who we are ourselves. We're walking around like we're defeated, like we have no power. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And God makes it so he gives us that, 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 that the equipment and the ability the power of his might, we be strong in the Lord. Not in the power of your might. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might that you might be able to stand. We got to take a stand, beloved. And then you can be able to withstand when things start coming. The opposition is coming. The strong winds are blowing. And it seems like everything is just falling apart. God is the one who makes it so no matter what it is, no matter what's left, no matter what we have, God will allow us to use what we've got. And he'll use whatever we've got for him to do what he needs to do. So if you think you don't have much, little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. But then the other part of crossing over into Jordan, which is a little more intimate, when you cross over into Jordan and you go on for your inheritance, I tell you the closer, uh, my pastor, Pastor Ruffin would say it like this. He said, the closer to the light you go, the more of yourself he'll show. So as you are walking with Jesus and you're traveling and you're crossing the Jordan and now here you are, getting ready to go into the battle of Jericho and all the other things they're going to deal with as they go to inherit the land. The other thing that we realize is that God, when we walk with Jesus, he'll cause us to also start to deal with our own weaknesses. We start having introspection. He starts making us, we start examining ourselves that he might be able to purge us and that he can allow us to see that no matter what it is, that, that, that yes, weeping does endure for a night, but, did you hear that word? But joy, it cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. We're bearing in our bodies, always bearing in our bodies, bodies, the dying of the Lord Jesus. Because if I'm crucified with Christ, he said, nevertheless, I live. No matter what it is, I, no matter what hardship I go through, no matter what things I come that might make it so that I find myself even, even fearing and being concerned about whether I'm going to live or whether I'm going to die. The Bible allows us to experience Jesus Christ in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship that we have with him in the midst of the suffering that we experience. Hallelujah. So what they had to do, what we have to do, we have to start laying hold by faith, 
Lay hold of the promises of God. Because God is not slack concerning his promises, beloved, as men count slackness. God is not wishy-washy in what he said in his word. We need to stand on God's word. We need to be able to make it so that we can have faith in what God has said. And the book of Joshua is a picture of everyday life with Jesus. Life in Christ. It's what we're called to do, beloved. It's what we're called to do, beloved, as we prepare ourselves to cross over into 2022. We need to understand what God has called us to do is he's called us to go through on a daily basis to take hold of the promises of God. We've got to take hold of the promises of God and then not just take hold of them because you could be ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. God doesn't want us to have a head knowledge. He wants us to have an experiential knowledge and relationship that, that allows us to know Christ and to make him known. <clears throat> the other thing is I like is that he wants us not to just know the promises. He wants us to walk out the promises of God. The words got to become flesh beloved. The Bible, Paul was talking to the church of Corinthians and he, they wanted to give him he, you know, certificates and accolades, you know, to commend him for the work that he was doing. And he said, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need the commendations. Do I really need any commendations for you? Do I need you to affirm or to uh, attest to the fact of who I am as an apostle or the work that I'm doing through the power and the spirit of God? He said, this is the, this is the, he said, this is the power move right here. He says, you are, you are our epistle, beloved, the preaching of the word the word of God, you hear the word and faith comes by hearing. But the Bible, James said that faith without works is dead. Whatever it is that God has caused you to believe, he also causes it to cause you to see yourself. But then after that, he wants you to walk in accordance to what he showed you so he can live out a manifestation of Christ in your life. I'm going to slow it down a little bit, slow it down a little bit. Listen, what he's really concerned about on a daily basis is that you will walk out the promises, that people will see you living the word, that you, you'll be the living word. You'll be a living epistle. You'll be not a letter that they read, but a letter that they see. The things you do, they'll read that. You, you, living epistles seen and read of men. He wants us to walk out the promises. So that's what crossing the Jordan is all about. We'll never enter, we'll never enter the new if we fail to enter the land. If we stay in a situation where we don't allow ourselves to let our light shine, then we will not, we will not enter the land. We'll be like Moses. We will not be able to cross over into the promises that God has for us. Being saved is one thing. That doesn't mean you're going to inherit the promise. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to live in the fullness of the inheritance that God had, the blessings that God has set aside in the store for you. Come on, look at Moses. Moses, amen. Wait, Moses was saved. How do we know Moses was saved? Because at the transfiguration, when the Lord Jesus was transfigured, the Bible says that they were there, Peter, James, John, with the Lord Jesus, and Jesus was transfigured right in their sight. And the Bible says two men appeared, one named Elijah and the other one named Moses. Evidence to the fact that Jesus, look, that Moses was saved and that he still went to heaven but he did not experience the inheritance and the promise of the promised land of the milk and the honey that God had for Israel down here on earth. Beloved, here it is. When you look, when you fail to apply God's promises to every life and every situation that you encounter, if you fail to walk by faith, but you find yourself walking by sight and not by faith, it kind of looks like this. It's, 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 you find, if you find, you, you find yourself, you, if you wander in the wilderness, you, you, that's what happened to, to Israel when they refused to believe God and they, a, a, a three day journey turned into 38 years, 40 years wandering around in the wilderness. When you're wandering in the wilderness, are you wandering in the wilderness, beloved? Are you wandering in the wilderness? When you wander in the wilderness, it's like you're out of fellowship. You're living in the world, but you're disconnected with the people of God and the things of God. You're not involved. You're not allowing yourself to get involved in secret and private devo devotions with God. You're not spending one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. You're not spending time reading the word of God. You're not allowing God to constantly feed you, to be transforming you by the renewing of your mind as you take in the word of God. 
as you embrace the word of God, and then as you walk out the word of God. That's what it's like when you fail to enter the land. You wander in the wilderness. You're out of fellowship. You're living in the world disconnected. You wander in the wilderness. You don't have a church home. You're wandering in the wilderness. You don't have a church home. Don't let COVID give you excuse not to go to church. We're in church right now, beloved. And guess what? God has made it so that despite whatever happens, God allows the body of Christ, just like they did in Acts, hallelujah, in chapter 2 and verse 42, they went house to house because it was so many people. They have no church to go to, so they did it in the houses. God made it so, look, I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden, all the technology was quickly learned, and now we're on Facebook Live. We're on all these different matters. And look at this. I'm going... I, I'm in your home right now and sitting in my house. God is a blessed hallelujah. So don't use the excuse to be able to be to not enter the land and be wandering in the wilderness because you say you don't have a church home. No, you can't forsake yourself from assembling. We're assembling right here together. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, there I'll be in the midst. God is in the midst of all this right now. All of us are gathered right here wherever you are. If you're in your car, if you're in your home, we're all gathered together in his name. I guarantee he's right there in the presence of your house. He's right there in the midst of your fellowship. He's right there in the midst of the worship. He's right there in the midst of the praise. He said he inhabits the praises of his people, and we don't have to be together to praise God. The Bible says if you don't have a church home, you don't have a Christian family, you don't have Christian family, you don't have Christian, I mean, I have my earthly family, I have my, 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 my family, but when you have a Christian family, it means that you have people in the church that are like your brothers, and they're your brothers and sisters in Christ, they're your family members. If you're wandering in the wilderness, you're living powerless in 2021. We can't enter 2022 living powerless with all the power that we've got working in us. We've got the God of the Bible who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. God is all, all powerful. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. He knows all things. Hallelujah. It's because of him. Everything, God, with, with God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. If you are living and you're wandering in the wilderness, you have not entered and crossed over into the promised land, living the life of Jesus, you're living in powerlessness. If you're living in powerlessness, come on, beloved. So many people are hearing Christians talking like they don't even know the Lord. We're talking about the things that are going on like as if it's doom and gloom for us. What the Bible says, no matter what it is, it, this, this stuff that's going on, it might fall by your not thousands by your right hand. He said, but it will never, this stuff, these plagues will never come nigh unto you. Living and not entering and grabbing the inheritance. You could be saved but you haven't crossed over. Moses was saved, but Moses didn't cross over. Some of us, you can't get stuck and, and find yourself in a rut. You can't be living like you have no victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Those two words, the operative. This is the victory to overcome the world, even your faith. Now, faith, beloved, faith is the substance, the absolute tangible manifestation of the very things that we're hoping for and the evidence of the things that are not seen. The evidence of the unseen God making the things that you, that you can't see become seen. The evidence of the unseen God making things that you're hoping for and believing for him to do and to manifest in your life. The God who brings something and can make something out of nothing as he formed the earth and the world. The God of the Bible the Bible, the Bible says that we look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And the Bible says that we are looking to the hills from which cometh our help because our help comes from the Lord. This is the victory, beloved, that overcomes the world. It's our faith. We can't see our way out of this. We got the faith. We got to believe God out of this. We can't be wondering. Look, I, 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 I'm vaccinated. I'm vaccinated, but I'll tell you right now, my, my, the hedge of protection that I noticed around me, a lot of it I've seen how God has made it so people broke out in COVID right where I was. And God made it, God, thank God, I'm kept by the power of God. Glory to his name. I'm not saying anything. I, I, I have very, very close friends that are believers, some that have gotten COVID. But I thank the Lord that one thing's for sure, no, ink, no, no, look, no, no respirator, no intubation and all that. And he's kept us. He's kept us alive, and we thank the Lord for that. Amen? We thank the Lord for that. So when it is, it's time to enter the new. It's time for us, beloved, as we prepare to cross over. It's time to enter the new. It's time for new dedication, new dedication, new dedication to the Lord. You need to literally start the year off by rededicating your life, by saying, you know what? I, I am going to, I am going, I am going to 
dedicate myself. I'm, I'm not going to be in this rut. I'm going to get out the funk. No, 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 no. Look, I, I'm going back to the old cliche. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, um, I don't smoke. I don't chew. I don't hang with folk to do. I'm, I'm, look, I'm in the world. I'm not of the world. Back in the 70s, we really had a big thing about being worldly and not being worldly, being in the world, not of the world, not looking like the world, not marching according to the world's beat, keeping up with the rhythm and the march and everything that's going on in the world. Come on now, y'all. Okay, okay. Stop. Stop. Be separate. Come out from among them. Be separate. We've got to be separated unto God. We've got to be sanctified, set apart for God to use us. We've got to be sanctified for God, set apart so God can get the glory out of our lives. I don't know about you, but when the Lord saved me and I had a stroke in the Bible and, and, and my friends and the doctors cannot imagine that I had a stroke in October of 2020, look at me now. That's God. Hallelujah. That's God. That's God. That's God. That's God because my Redeemer lives. My, the Lord that I believe in, I'm separate. I'm his. I belong to him and trust me. And he keeps me. So here it is. Here it is. As we prepare to go in. Hallelujah. If you're looking at your clock, I got 1126. I'm going to preach all the way up and then we're going to pray. I'm going to pray. But here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's time to enter the new. It's time to enter the new. New dedication. It's time to enter the new. New determination. Determination to do what? Determination to be obedient to God. Before they entered the new, God gave Israel five things. We'll close with those five things. And then we'll drop down and give our knees. And we'll bring in 2022. Are you ready for five things? The first thing God gave them was a commandment. If you look at Joshua chapter one, we'll go right on through it. It says, he gave them the first thing, a commandment. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, not tomorrow, not later. He said, now, because that portion of what I was doing is behind us. Let's move forward and into the new. He said, now, therefore, it's time for us to what? To arise. It's time for us to rise up, beloved. Come on, saints. It's time for us to, our army of the Lord, we need to raise up. We need to rise up. <coughs> we need to rise above the circumstances and the situations. And we've got to do the, look at the word. The verb says, go. We can't be sitting still. We got to go over this Jordan. We're going to cross over rivers. We're going to cross over obstacles. We're going to go past the impossible. We're going to cross over into whatever it is that is trying to stand against us. No weapon formed against us is going to be able to prosper. And he says, you and all these people, all the believers, all my and people that are part of the promise, all the seed of Abraham, all the Israelites, all the the, look, all the earthly Israelites and all the spiritual Israelites, God is saying, it's time for us to do what? To get up, go over these obstacles and go and enter to the land of our inheritance and the promises of God. He says, which I do give them. Watch, you see that? He said, which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Come on now, are you a child of Abraham? I am, hallelujah, I'm a spiritual Jew. <laughs> and then he says, what? The first thing is a commandment. Number two, he says, he, God gave them a charted territory. It's already mapped out. He says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you. I've given unto you. God says, look, you don't have to wonder Look, I've got houses that you're not going to build. i got vineyards you don't have to plant. Everywhere, when, when it comes to the promises of God and what I already have for you, I've got things set apart for you. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, reveals them unto us. Every place, beloved, that the sole of your foot shall trod upon, God says, I gave it to you. And just like I said it to Moses, I'm saying it to you. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even into the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea towards the going down in the sun shall be your coast. I'm going to slow down right there because that's very powerful. God is saying, even though these places are occupied by people already, it means nothing because trust me. All of it's mine. And if I say you can have it, can't nobody say you can't get it. If I declare it, if I say it, it's done. If I, if God said, look, God says from from the, from the wilderness, look at how God moves. He says, I already got things charted out for you. I've got, look, I've got things already mapped out. You don't have any idea what I've got in store for you. You have no idea what I've got in store for you. He says, from that wilderness, all oh, in this Lebanon, even to the great river, even the, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun. When the sun goes down, you can't even tell where the, how far that is. So he gives us a commandment. And then it gives us charted territory. The third thing it gives is a confidence-building assurance. A confidence 
building assurance. Ah, it starts getting personal now. Come on, Joshua. Come on, if, if, if Christ be in you, you're Christ. He's in you. You're the body of Christ. He's talking to you, Joshua. There should not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about the individual that can hurt your body. You got to worry about the one that can hurt your body and your soul. And the only one that could ever cast you into hell or be eternally separated from God. He says, as I was with Moses, that's exactly how I'm going to be with you. That's how I'm going to be with you. And then he gives us some things. Look, he says, look, he says, so I will be with you. Woo. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. He says, in other words, I'm going to come right alongside you. I'm be right in the midst. I'm going to be right among you. He says, yeah, I'll be right there, right there in the midst. I'm a present help in the time of trouble. More trouble, I'm right there in the midst. I'm present in it. I'm a present help. I'm there as your parakeet test. I'm the one who came alongside to help you, comfort you. And then he goes further, says, I will not. Listen to the, that's some strong affirmations. That is so solid. He didn't say I might not. He says, I will not fail you. That means I'll never desert you. I will never desert you. I will never leave you. You're not alone. You're not all by yourself. I don't care what you're going through. You're not by yourself, beloved. The devil is a liar. You're not alone. You're never alone. Stop telling yourself, I'm so lonely. The devil's a liar. Jesus is right there in the midst. If you really want to really see how present he is, just start talking to him right where you are. I guarantee you, you'll get an answer. You'll get an answer. Not just that, but you can't see the you can't see the wind moving, but you can see the trees moving. You'll see the impact and the effect of the presence of God all over you. And that God is making God is surrounding you with his favor and his blessings, surrounding you like a shield. God is right there and present. And he says, and nor will I forsake you. I'll never ever forsake you. I will not abandon you. I will not abandon you. The fourth thing he gives Joshua a call for courage and strength. He says, be strong. Come on, beloved, grab that, grab that. Be what? Be strong and courageous. I look at the word strong, and as I look at the word strong, the synonym, be, watch this, be strong, be solid, <laughs> be resilient. That means nothing can break you. Be tough, be heavy duty, be strong, be convincing. Then he says, and courageous, courageous. The word courageous means be brave, be daring, step out on faith. Don't be timid, speak God's word. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be, look, let people boldly declare the fact that you are saved and that you are a Christian. Share your faith. Share your faith. Share the gospel. Back in the day, we used to pass our tracks. Do we still do it today? Have, when's the last time you led somebody to Christ? <clears throat> be gutsy. Be spirited. <laughs> like I am tonight. Be spirited, you know. Be fearless. Courageous. Then he says, be careful, be careful, Joshua. Be careful, here it is, here's, here's our two operatives. Remember the first one was what? Faith, and the other one is obedience. Moses didn't enter in because of disobedience. With Joshua, the emphasis is on obedience. Be careful, God said, be careful to obey. If you don't wanna block your blessings, if you don't wanna short circuit the favor that I have and the things that I have, fellowship with me. To, to be able to literally experience the flow of the prosperity and the blessings that I have set aside for you is really contingent upon you being very careful to obey all the law of my, the, the law of my servant Moses gave you. Uh, when we start preaching this Sunday, we're going to start breaking down some of that. But for, night, for now, we're going to prepare for the 2022 crossover. Watch this. It says, do not turn from it. 
to the right or to the left. In other words, don't be wishy-washy. Don't be sometime Christian, other times not. Don't be in the word, not in the word. Don't be in the word and in the world. Don't be hot and then be cold. He says, don't turn, don't, don't turn from it. Don't, don't turn from it to the left or to the right. And he says, if you just stay focused and be steadfast and unmovable, and you just keep your mind stayed on me. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. And then he says, because that, that, it says you do it, that you may be successful wherever you go. Wow, wow, wow. So what's the secret to success? Being careful to obey God's word. <clears throat> verse eight, verse eight. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. In other words, be talking about it all the time. Talk about what happened in the Old Testament. Talk about what happened in the New Testament. Share the stories, share it. Talk about it. Let it always be on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Be thinking about the word, thinking about it. Studying to show yourself approved. Be a workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. But then, look, chew the word. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It'd be sweeter than the honey. Sometimes it could be salty, but the word is good. The word is good. The Lord Jesus is good. He says, if you just do that <clears throat> and you meditate on it day and night, he says, so that you do it so that it can help you to be obedient. You meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. You see that? If you meditate on God's word and take time out to stay in God's word, it will help you to be careful. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We're ready to close it out now. We're going to close it out now. We have 1137 and ticking. But we've got just a little bit more. Just want to drop this on you. He says, be careful. He says that you may be careful to do everything written in it. He says, then. Oh, that's an if-then thing. If you keep the book of the law, keep it on your lips. Meditate it day and night. That you be careful to be obedient. Obedience, he said, then you will prosper. You'll be prosperous and successful. Woo! All right. I can feel the altitude going down. And the plane starting to we're going down in altitude hallelujah the clock is ticking 2021 is beginning to slowly diminish in our rearview mirror we're not going to look back we're just going to look forward we're crossing over and it says our point number five is a confirming reinforcement. He reinforces it three times. Have I not commanded you? He says, this is so important. I've actually said this, Joshua, three times because I know that things have made it so that you are showing signs of weakness. But don't worry about that because when you're weak, that's when I'm made strong. But he says, but be strong in the Lord. Be strong in me. Be strong in me. I will strengthen you. He says, be strong and, and, and courageous because I am going to be with you wherever you go. Don't be afraid. I'm going to fight this battle for you. The battle's not yours. It's mine. He says, all you got to do is just look, be strong, be courageous, just stand, and I will fight these battles for you. Trust me when I tell you, there is no battle that you've got to ever fight because every battle and every promise that I've made to you is yea and amen. So be it. Finally, beloved. Uh, this was good. This is good. I love it. We're striking up on 12 midnight, preaching the new year in. What a glorious time we've been having. But finally, we have Israel taking the land. And it's a picture of meeting battles in the promises of God. Not fighting them according to your own strength, but a walking in wisdom, applying God's word to every battle that you fight in your life, every situation in your life, walking in wisdom, being able to stand on the promises, fight the battles based on the promises of God, every day fighting, <laughs> all the day, Joshua, all the day fighting, but you got to learn how to fight standing and holding on to God's promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God bless the name of the Lord. Come on, can y'all give the Lord a praise? Can you give can you post the amen in your comment? Can you post the amen? Can you say hallelujah to the name of the Lord? Can you glorify the Lord with me? Can you magnify his holy name in the name of Jesus? We are here. And as we're here, we just want to focus on what God is doing and what he's preparing to do with us as we get ready to enter the new. We're going to ask of all of you if you could uh, just begin to uh, prepare your heart. And we're going to ask you that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, that you could uh, prepare our, our posture uh, every year. It's been the tradition of of my 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 wife, uh, Sister Joyce, and myself, that we have always felt that entering the new year in prayer is a very very powerful posture to start off in. So I'd like to ask that you would join with me, and that you would uh, prepare yourself for us to approach the throne of grace. And the Bible says that we should come boldly to the throne of grace. The throne where God allows us to be endowed with abilities and enablements that can only come from God. A grace that is sufficient for all that we've been through, he's kept us. And the grace is sufficient for all that is yet to come. Because thine is, is the kingdom and the, and the glory and the power. So we're going to look to him. As been, our ears have definitely been in tune with the powerful benediction that we've heard down through the ages. Now, beloved, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. So we, 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 we have the Lord Jesus. He's our high priest. And he is not... He's not foreign. He's been on all points. Everything that's been going on and everything going on in our lives, he's been touched by these things, yet without sin. And he tells us that we should be able to come to him despite whatever it is that you've done. No matter who you've done it with, no matter where you've gone, the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus says, come. Come unto me. Come to my throne of grace where you can receive unmerited. You don't have to do anything to earn the grace and the love of God. Unmerited love and favor. So the, the Bible makes it very clear that despite ourselves, God's grace is sufficient. And even though our sins be as scarlet, he promises that he would make them as white as wool. And though they be red like crimson, they'll be white as snow. So whatever it is, we need to begin to prepare ourselves to bring it to the altar of sacrifice and lay it there. Placing all of our cares 
on him because he cares for us. He cares for you. And as we prepare ourselves to cross over, I'd like to ask if you would begin to think of the goodness of Jesus. And as you think of the goodness of Jesus, I'd like to ask if you would literally begin to prepare your mind to forget about yourself and to concentrate on him and to worship. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord and you've never ever repented, turned from sins and the things that has separated us from God, this is a good time to start the year off in surrender and what the Bible calls repentance and repentance. The word repent means to turn from sin and turn to the true and the living God. So what we want to do now is we want to ask if you would bow with me and that you would begin to, uh, for some of us, some lay prostrate. Some find themselves getting on their knees. The main thing is that we want to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt us in due season. Hallelujah. Can we start off by saying some praises and sending up praise unto God? Can you praise the Lord right where you are? Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. We bless your holy name. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. God, we come in the name of Jesus. Come in, God, to mark the times. Come, God, to etch into the portals of time, in the stones of history, a remembrance of 20. 21. God, we come and we first come to intercede, oh God. We intercede for the world. God, that you will draw men unto you. We also come, Lord, in the name of Jesus, on behalf of the United States of America, we pray for President Biden. God, that you would strengthen him. God, that you will stir up his mind and you would touch his heart. And that you will allow his heart, God, to flesh out those things which are in alignment with your word. God, we come in the name of Jesus, Lord, to say that we go beyond the ones that recognize or they flaunt themselves for being rulers, kings, and presidents governors and senators and whatever else they may call themselves. God, we know that you're the king of kings and you're the Lord of lords. So God, we stretch our hands to you. There is none other. So there, God, we dare not look any further because we know who you are. And God, we come and ask that you would have mercy on our nation. And God, that you would allow some of the suffering in the morning to be turned into laughter. God, we pray that in the midst of the calamity or the hurt or some of the pain, in the midst of losses and heartbreak, that you would heal the brokenhearted that you will set the captive free and that, God, you will use these experiences to tenderize our hearts to hear your voice and that we will find your spirit speaking clearly and that men, women, boys, and girls might be brought to a place where they'll hear you saying, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. God, that they will call out, what must I do? 
to be saved. God, we pray that you'll send the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ to impact the hearts and the souls of those that are lost. God, we know that everyone is desiring change. But God, we know you're the only one that can change the hearts of man. You're the only one, oh God, that can literally renew and give man a, a clean heart and that you can renew a right spirit in us. God, we pray that you will come against every satanic force and every hindering spirit, oh God, that is coming against the people of God and coming against the world and coming against mankind. God, we come asking that you would deliver and that you will put Satan at bay. God, we bind Satan in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you would loose your power. Loose your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Send an anointing, God. Send an anointing over the country that will destroy and break yokes. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will stop the plots of those that are even planning to do hideous or things even on this night. God, send the miracle to stop the harm, stop the plan, stop the violence. God, we pray that you will allow the spirit of liberty to go forth and that you will heal us and set us free in the name of Jesus. We come before you, Lord God, thanking you for this day. And now, oh God, as we enter the new, we pray, oh God, that you will Give us a spirit of rededication. Did you give us a spirit, oh God, of determination? We pray, Father God, that you would allow us, Lord, to begin to be very proud and bold about who we are in you and that we won't, we'll no longer hide our candlestick under a bushel, but that God will We'll hold it up, oh God, and that we'll let our light shine. God, we pray that the Shekinah glory of your power and your glory, the radiance, the brilliance of your glory, God, that it will shine forth out of our hearts, oh God, and that the glorious light of the gospel, Lord, will shine out of our hearts, God, in such a way, God, that men will be able to see you. And that as they see you, God, they'll see Jesus. You're the author and the finisher. God, we pray for salvation in the lungs of the land. We pray, God, that you will that you will bind up this coronavirus. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will allow us, oh God, to be loosed from the bondage of it. Use it for your glory, God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue, Lord, to allow us to occupy until you manifest what it is that you desire to come out of it. Then, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that as it has allowed us to to introspect as it allows us, God, to come out and to be separate and to be able to, to spend more time with you and spend time with our loved ones. God, we pray that you will that you will rekindle our relationships, God. We pray for healing in our families, healing in our marriages, healing in our children, God. We pray that you'll keep our children from the evil one, from the wicked one, God. We pray for a hedge of protection around our children, God. We pray, oh God, that you will continue, Lord, in the name of Jesus to uh, allow us to be bound together in Christian love and God, that we will literally, 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 God, be a part of your solution for the world. God, we thank you in Jesus' name for how you've allowed us, oh God, to be set apart. God, as we move from this place and as we get our hearts and our minds ready to cross into the fresh year, we, God, we pray for a fresh anointing we pray, God, that you'll give us a hunger for fresh bread. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will give us fresh insight, fresh revelation. God, we pray that you will allow us, oh God, to be able to be to experience a, a, a regeneration and rejuvenation, God, that you will allow us, oh God, that you will renew the years and that you restore the years that the canker worm ate away. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless our loved ones, our family members, our mothers, our fathers, God, our loved ones, our husbands, our wives, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will strengthen our families, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will allow those of our family members that are lost, oh God, that this year, God, this day, God, that you will move and that you will bring them to a point where, God, we can see salvation of our little ones. You said, God, that you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, thou shalt be saved in thy house. God, 
we are believing and we're, we're literally claiming, declare, God, salvation for our kindred, salvation for our loved ones, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We bless your holy name, oh God. We're not slack. We know you're not slack concerning your promises, oh God. So you told us, oh God, you told us, oh God, that you would save our house. But even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved in thy house, God. We're claiming that in thy house, God, that you'll save our brothers, God, that you'll save our cousins, you save our uncles and our aunts, our mothers, our fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, God. In the name of Jesus, neighbors, God, friends and their children, God. We pray, oh God, that you'll send revival to the land, God. We'll see a manifestation of this prayer on this night with these believers, God, that have come on one accord, oh God, kneeling, God, in the power of prayer and our faith being, our arms being stretched, God, that one person in the name of Jesus, that one of us, oh God, as we get a prayer through and we send our prayers up, God, we bless your name, God, and we thank you in advance, oh God, for doing the things that God that I have not seen nor ear heard, God, that you're doing exceedingly abundantly, God, things that we can't even think, things that we can't even imagine, things that go beyond what we could ever ask or even think, God, we thank you, God, for your power and, God, how you're manifesting yourself, God. We yield to your power. We yield to your sovereignty. We yield to your will, God. We come, God. We bow down. We surrender, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. We turn away, God. We turn from the sin, God, in the name of Jesus. We're coming out, oh, God. We're not going to enter, God. We're not going to be like a dog going back and eating its own vomit, God. We're coming out, God. Clean us. God, create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit in us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We pray, God, that we'll have the same love, that we'll have the same joy, that we'll be on one accord, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you'll bring the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace to be able to be released on the land. God, we pray that you'll stir up our ministries, that you'll spread up our, our, uh, stir up our ministries, God, that you will send a spirit of evangelism evangelism stir up the gift of god that's in us oh god that we'll be stirred up god fired up god and rejuvenated <clears throat> that we won't be slack god that we won't be slothful but god that we'll be seeking your face god for how we can be used for your glory in the name of jesus used for your glory in the name of jesus hallelujah come on bless the name of the lord hallelujah thank you god god we pray right now oh god that we'll continue to occupy till you come oh god Occupied till you come, God. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, God, for another day's journey. Thank you, God, for another year. Thank you, God, for keeping us through 2020, 2021. Now, oh God, we thank you because we are blessed to be able to see the land, of the glory of the Lord, the land of the living God. And we are here, oh God. Thank you, God, for allowing us to cross over, for allowing us, God, to enter the new, to enter the new, God. We have great expectation, expectancy from you. You are the object of our faith, God. You are the object as we have hope in the manifestations of you. We have hope against our hope. And the more hopeless it seems, God, the more hopeful we are as we trust and believe you, God. We believe you, God. We believe you, God. Therefore, God, in the name of Jesus, we speak those things that are not as though they are. We speak healing over the land. God, we speak liberty, oh God, for the captive. We speak sight for the blind. We speak, God, that the lame will walk. God, we speak, God, in the name of Jesus, that she will do what you do, God, the way that you do it, oh God, and that you will blow our minds with your miracles, God. Signs that cause us to wonder in the name of Jesus. We come before you, God, in the name of Jesus and hallelujah, right where you are, right where you are, as we come upon it, as we come upon it and we're 60 seconds away. Can you post hallelujahs? Can you post some praise the Lord? Can you put your head down? <laughs> and bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you and we praise you, God, as we enter the new. For it's in Jesus' name, that we ask this blessing, and for his name's sake, we pray. Let the people of God say amen, 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 amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, saints. Come on, give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God, saints. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, Lord. Happy New Year. Thank you, Jesus. Happy New Year. Bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's countenance, may his face shine upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. We are so excited. We magnify the Lord and we bless his holy name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So with that being said, we thank the Lord for you coming out with us tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, beloved. You can post some hallelujahs. You can post some happy new years. On the, the, the others are going to see your posts and your praise. Hallelujah. I thank you for spending the time with us tonight. This is a wonderful time. What a glorious, glorious manifestation of God that we've experienced here tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to our hearts, for filling us with your spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our cup's running over, God. Overflow, God. Overflow. Our cup runneth over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless the Lord. We praise the Lord for this moment and for this time. And we ask God to continue to have his way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that gives us uh, an opportunity for all of us to continue to, to move on and to continue to bless God tonight. Uh, my name is Pastor Anthony Lester, and it's been a privilege. For those of you that are on with us tonight, uh, welcome and God bless you. Happy New Year. 2022. Come on, beloved. Press in there. You got that inheritance. Step out. Fight the fight because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. I was trying to get some sound out of my speakers, but I just can't seem to do it. So with that being said, we're going to bless everyone and wish you a good night. Amen, and God bless. Amen. Happy New Year.